My name is Carolyn McCabe. I am a sophomore at Emory University and I am currently studying biology at the college. Today I'm going to be talking about the plant Thymus vulgaris L, which is in the Lamiaceae or mint family, and it is commonly known as thyme. Throughout my presentation, I want to cover a few topics and answer a variety of questions about time. Some of these are what is thymus vulgaris? What is time? How has time been used historically? What are the chemical constituents that make time so important? What has research discovered about time? What are the dangers associated with the use of time? And how is time used today? Thyme is a small woody shrub that is highly aromatic and many have attributed a lemon peppery smell and or taste to the thyme plant. It is a native to the Mediterranean and is a perennial plant meaning that it flowers each year. As you can see from the picture its flowers are usually light blue or light purple. In terms of its growing conditions, thyme prefers light and dry soil and when it is grown in moist environments it is able to successfully grow and be prolific, however the plant loses a significant portion of its aromatic qualities, which as we know implicate a large amount of chemical constituents which can then also implicate a large amount of chemical activity. Time can be found or has been found to be used in a variety of different cultures, ones that include ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, Israel, Andalusia, Italy, and many others. Additionally, it has been, been, been mentioned in many ancient texts for medicinal and for culinary uses. For its medicinal uses, it has been mentioned in a variety of historical texts, such as the Cairo Geniza, which is from Egypt, Avicenna, and Agafiki. And something that is interesting about these prescriptions is that one finds a large degree of homology between a variety of cultures. So the traditional prescriptions that time was was used for were for ailments associated with the respiratory system such as bronchitis or whooping cough, um, skin infections, skin inflammation, childbirth, um, gastrointestinal disorders or inflammation, insect bites, and most forms of swelling. So if you find lists of this prescription in the Chirogenesia, for example, which is from one culture, you will typically find the same prescriptions found in other cultural texts. Now, as we know, thyme is traditionally known as a spice, and thereby it is a very common flavoring ingredient in many dishes, and in cultures such as Greece, Rome, in Israel, and many others, thyme has been used for soups, for stews, for flavoring meat such as chicken, or beef, or fish, it is also a common flavoring ingredient in many drinks. It can be used in a wide variety of ways. Now the chemistry and pharmacology of thyme is very interesting and in terms of its chemical activity and its medicinal activity the volatile oil content is very very important. Now something that is interesting about the volatile oil content or the chemotype of thyme is that in each plant that is found around the world, in each thyme plant that is found around the world, the chemotypes differ. So if you have a plant found in the United States and one found in Andalusia, the chemotypes of those two plants will be entirely different, meaning that the composition of the volatile oil content will be different. And this can also be affected by the time of year that the plant is collected and where in that region it is also living. Now these two compounds that I have listed here, thymol and carocrol, are two volatile oils. They are phenols which are very important in thyme's chemical activity and such as its antibiotic, antifungal, antimicrobial, and antioxidant activity. Its biological activity has been researched in a variety of different ways and in a particular in vitro study scientists investigated thyme's antifungal activity against a specific food fungus Aspergillus flavus which is a very important fungus in the developing world because it commonly infects cereals which is a major export in these countries. Now the scientists were able to prove that thyme, thyme has a very strong antifungal effect on the 
Aspergillus flavus aflatoxin um, elaboration. And as this chart shows, there is a very low minimum inhibitory concentration of time that is able to stop this toxic production. Another study investigated in, vi in vivo times antispasmodic effect, and this was done on guinea pig ileum, and scientists were able to effectively demonstrate the t extract's inhibition of contractile responses of the ileum, which were induced throughout the study. And this is particularly important when one considers irritable bowel syndrome and the diarrhea that is associated with the syndrome. And if using this extract is able to limit the other symptoms that are associated with this syndrome, then the quality of life of these individuals will be greatly improved and can be used in many other antispasmodic um, treatments as well. Now the mechanism of action of time is also inherently linked to its essential oil content and once again thymol and carbocrol are the most important compounds and I did not mention this before but the composition of thymol and carbocrol usually make up at least two-thirds of the measured volatile oil content in every time plant. Some other important compounds include glycosides, flavonoids, p-cyamine, and the others listed here. In terms of time's antimicrobial and antifungal properties, thymol is responsible for the repression of the aflatoxin synthesis, like I mentioned, for the fungus aflavus. Its spasmolytic and antitussive properties come from the activity of thymol, carbocrol, and flavonoids, which inhibit acetylcholine and histamine receptors and also are involved in calcium channels. <clears throat> Time's antioxidant property comes from the biphenyl compounds and flavonoids, and these inhibit superoxide anion production. Time's anti-inflammatory properties also come from thymol and carbocrol, which inhibit prostaglandin synthesis. Some clinical studies have been done on common or not so common products that are in use today that contain thyme and some of its essential oils. A common product that we all know is Listerine and scientists did a study on Listerine that contained thymol in regards to plaque and gingivitis and they were able to show that the use of Listerine in a daily regimen was able to inhibit plaque and gingivitis growth. Another drug called bronchipret, which is a drug commonly prescribed in Germany for acute bronchitis in children, was investigated for time's ability or this specific drug's ability and efficiency in treating acute bronchitis. And the study was able to confirm that it is a much more efficient and much more preferred drug um, for the patients to use for the treatment of the acute bronchitis and it earned greater scores than the three other common drugs that it was being prescribed against. Now as with any natural product you have to be careful with its use because of any toxicity that it may have or any adverse drug side effects that may occur and so the essential oil of thyme is quite toxic. It is a very concentrated oil and it has a lot of chemical constituents as I mentioned before. Some other precautions that one needs to take are allergies. If you're allergic to the mint family, the Limiaceae family, such as plants like basil and thyme, you have to be also careful with this plant. Uh, some drug interactions include antithyrotropic effects, estradiol and progesterone receptor binding, and percutaneous absorption of topical thymol. Currently today, in regards to allopathic and CAM therapies, thyme extract or dot, um, in a dry or liquid form and thyme leaves are commonly used as teas, compresses, and the oil itself is very important. So like I mentioned before, Listerine and Bronchopret are two natural products that are used and thyme oil is found in many natural food stores. And these various forms of thyme are usually used to treat inflammation, halitosis, stomach irritability, infection, and other respiratory disorders like bronchitis and other aspects of cough. Overall, thyme, I believe, is a sufficiently overlooked plant, one that is, is usually considered just a spice and something that is used for culinary pursuits, but it has many medicinal qualities that are very important, especially with its antibiotic, antitussive, antifungal activity, and 
As with any other product, though, one definitely must take caution with its use. I think that because of the many qualities of thyme, it has a very bright future in allopathic treatments and also possibly in pharmaceuticals for developing other drugs in terms of its antibiotic activity and possibly these natural preservatives that can be used in the food industry to help make our food and even our health much better. Thank you for listening.